Amen. But anyway, memories are very powerful reminders of our life, of our lives, aren't they? And you know, the good thing about memories is that we get to choose which memories we want to think about. If there's negative memory, we can just simply push that out of our mind and say, I'm not going to think about that. But if there's a positive memory, we can think about that, enjoy it. And oftentimes our memories motivate us and comfort us and encourage us. And so I want to, as we jump into this message today, kind of a different type of a message, but I want you to take a minute and think of what is one of your favorite family memories, all right? You can go all the way back to when you were a little boy or girl or, you know, something in the more recent days. But just think about it for just a moment today. And I'll give you some of my favorite family memories as I just kind of to jog your thinking here. Uh, my grandmother, Hendren, used to buy orange sherbet for little Bobby because she just knew that I liked orange sherbet. You know, that made me feel special. It's a great memory for me. I cannot help but eat orange sherbet and not think of my grandma. You know, I got to think of my grandma. I remember a few lovely days of vacation in Colombia with my family on Playa Blanca, okay? I remember visiting lighthouses with my wife in Maine and and I've got a lot of memories that I can think about. And so how many of you have a memory in your mind that's precious and good, right? A memory of your grandkids, a memory of your time with your family, something that sticks out as special. Well, I want to encourage you that those memories are precious. And we need to be able to hold on to them with all of our might. And you see, I've been teaching and preaching for the last few weeks on the subject, fighting for your families. Fighting for our families, and I know that there are many families in our culture that are actually hurting. There's a lot of hurt out there in the world. There's a lot of stress in families. There's financial pressure, and there's sometimes sickness touches people or loss, and or maybe it's just sometimes sin just enters in and kind of tears things up. And I believe that sometimes the very best antidote to stress and feeling overwhelmed is to simply think of the good things and the good times that you have had. Now, some of you that are older like me can remember all of the old hymns, and I thought of an old hymn this week, and it goes like this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, the songwriter says this, count your many blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done in other words what the songwriter was saying was saying hey we need to sometimes activate our memories and see all of the beauty all of the good things that god has done for us Amen. my hope in this is this message is that I can interject some hope into your life and into your family. It's not my goal uh, to make you think about anything negative at all. Uh, but, but I just think we ought to sometimes focus on the good things that God has done for us. Times of life that have been so wonderful for us today. And so, uh, and, and my goal is, is, is really to tell you that for the next few years, or actually until Jesus comes, you've got been given a grand and a great opportunity, right? That opportunity is to make great memories with your family. That opportunity is to, is to seize the day, put energy and time and effort into making things happen. Don't you think that's a good idea? Amen. That opportunity is to be able to create an environment around you and your family where amazing memories will come forward. Amen. And uh, you have to have to have, uh, you know, we need, you, it's an opportunity to be able to remind your family of God's grace and God's power in your life. And actually to be able to hand over the, to the next generation a baton of faith and stories that have to do with how good God is. And so as we jump into this message today, I wanted to say that there are three things that we need to do on building family memories. And the first thing I want us to do is we've got to recognize that building family memories is God's idea. It's God's idea. 
In fact, the word remember is all the way through the Bible. There's, I was doing some research online this week and I discovered that there's 165 different passages of scripture where God commands for us to remember. Right. It's important right. that we remember. Right. And, uh, and, and uh, it's interesting that it seems like as, as, as you look at the big picture of the word of God, it's as though God says, listen, focus on and remember the good things but the bad things, the negative things, just forget about that. That's our God. He wants us to be able to focus on those things that are good. And how many of you know it's easy to forget? It's easy to forget. God wants us to remember. And so I want to take a look this morning at a, at a, at a story way back in the book of Joshua. And uh, I want to just set that story up for you today. Everybody remembers the story of the children of Israel. If you don't, I want to just let you know what happened. They had been slaves in Egypt, and God brought them out with a mighty hand and a, his outstretched arm in a very powerful way. And they came right to the edge of the land that God had promised them. And you might remember the story, how that they sent 12 spies into the land to see what the land was like. And the 12 spies came back and 10 of the spies came back with a negative report saying, oh, it's terrible. The, the giants are too big. The cities are too wild. We're just like grasshoppers. We're gonna get squashed and it's just horrible. We, why do we ever leave Egypt? And they came back and that negativity infiltrated the whole nation of Israel at that time. And, and this is an amazing story because it was not very many months prior to that when God, by his mighty power, had caused the Red Sea to divide right in front of them. They had stood on the shore and watched the Red Sea come back over, destroy all of Pharaoh's armies. They had stood on Mount Sinai and felt the trembling of the mountain and seen the presence of the visible sign of the presence of God up on the mountain. But yet here they are, and what happened was that they for God. Just a few months after leaving Egypt, all they saw was giants and walled cities. They, these were the same people who danced with Miriam on the shores uh, after God had, had, had parted the Red Sea, and now they had forgotten what, who their God was, how great he was, and the power that he had. How many of you say, I don't want to forget who my God is? And I don't want my kids to forget who God is or my grandkids to forget who God is. And so what happened was the whole nation had to go back to the wilderness for wandering in the desert. And you know the story, that unbelieving generation died in the wilderness. Moses finally passed on and a new leader arose. His name was Joshua. And now they're standing, imagine, they're standing right where they had been 40 years before. And across the Jordan River is the promised land. But this time the Jordan River's all that flood stage. It's roaring and it's raging. And you can imagine in your mind what that must have looked like. But you see, Joshua was a guy who said, I am not forgetting who God is. Right. He, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna remember that the God, uh, that, that same God that sir, I serve today is the same God who parted the Red Sea. Amen. And so he knew that as the, as, the, as the Ark of the Covenant and the priests who carried it, as they moved towards that Jordan River, that God was going to do the same thing he did then as he had done before that the river was going to part and uh, so Joshua he was one who remembered and he wanted the people of Israel to remember as well so he decides that he's going to take 12 men and have them carry 12 stones out of the Jordan and put them up in a pile let me read it for you out of Joshua chapter 4 verse 5 it says this and Joshua said to them, cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. And each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? 
Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. What was Joshua really saying, right? By doing this, by creating this memorial. And I would imagine that if you know men, there's got to have to be some competition on who can carry the biggest rock out of the middle of the Jordan, right? I'm sure there were some huge rocks that were taken out and put on the side there. What he was saying, he was saying really that spiritual memories are powerful for families. Amen. Spiritual memories are something that every family needs to have in their life. We need to remember who God is. We need to remember how great he is, what he's done for us. And so what the, the point was that generations later, you know, two or three generations later, they would be walking along the shore of the Jordan and they would come across this great big heap of stones. And, and the young people would say, what is this big old pile of stones here? And those who were old would say, hey, these stones are a reminder of who our God is. Amen. These stones tell us that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your God and my God stopped the water from flowing here. He allowed for us to pass on dry ground. He allowed for us to conquer this yeah. land of Canaan. God is the one who has given us all of these things. How many of you think that that's a good thing, right? Yeah. God said, remember the spiritual things that happen in your life. Remember the blessings that happen in your life. And that's not just found in the Old Testament. It's found in the New Testament, right? 